Not only is Hollywood trying to convince women to date down and humble ourselves, they do it to teenage girls too. Part two of why 10 Things I Hate About You is trash and basically ruined this amazing character by making her date down and also settle for a boy who actually hates her. So right out of the gate, she is a very loud mouth feminist who criticizes Hemingway and is not afraid to share her opinion in class. And right out of the gate, we learn that this guy asked what I miss and she tells him all this feminine stuff. He's like, oh, good. And like I said in my last video, it seems like every single man and teenage boy in this whole movie is on the incel spectrum. Even her teachers. He's the, he calls her Miss I Have an Opinion About Everything. Because she actually participates in class. And even when she is not difficult, but she's called by several characters in this movie. And she's actually trying to be nice to the teacher. He sends her to the office. Which is a regular thing as this crazy uh, guidance counselor who writes romance novels and is super inappropriate with other students. Says, oh, I hear you're terrorizing Mr. Morgan's class again. Terrorizing. Okay. And just like in the proposal in Sandra Bullock's character, everyone paints this this girl, the hero of the story, this smart, creative, opinionated woman, like the shrew. This I know people are like this taming in the shrew. I know. What I want y'all to understand is that this is not a feminist movie. The lead is feminist. And the point of the movie, just like the proposal and half the rom coms in Hollywood, is about humbling, confident independent women or even girls in this case whether it's other women doing it or men look at this the guidance counselor's like um everyone thinks you're a heinous burn they talk about you behind your back you might want to fix that so one of the main in smells this dude and then you know the new guy in town who is like lower on the ken shell spectrum these two guys i can't even go into how crazy they're playing they basically he wants to hook up with the shrewd's sister but their misogynistic father says that you know the hot younger sister can't date until the shrewd date but he'd rather neither of them date at all until they graduate because he's a controlling daddy warbucks in schmel um because his wife left him and he hates women and he takes out his rejection from his wife on his two girls and controlling them and the shrew tries to explain She's like, I, I don't date, have you seen the dudes at school? There's a reason why I don't F with these boys. And much like everyone else in the movie, um, the shrew's sister is like, it's not my fault she's a mutant and will never date. And the father is like, perfect, I get to sleep at night because I don't want my daughters dating a man as awful as me. So back to this dude's plan with his Inchmel friend. Pretends to be a French teacher to coerce the sister into dating him. Well, movies about men, uh, sorry, teenage boys coercing teenage girls. Just like every rom-com seems to be about men coercing women. It's coercion, y'all. Also calls the shrewd a difficult woman. And in order to go out with the sister, he tries to convince all of these losers to go out with the shrewd. And all of them are like, ew, no. As if any of them could get her. So then baby Kinsel is like, God, no one will go out with her. What do we do? How are you going to get laid by tricking her sister into sleeping with you if a dad won't let her go out? Like, oh, God. Hey, like, I don't even know how to explain how crazy this premise is. So then the nice guy, faking to be a French teacher, is like, how about this guy? The one the shrew already hates, who hates feminism. The guy who's stabbing a frog, burns things, the one that everyone's afraid of. Like, look at his face. The biggest loser in school. Like, let's hook her up with him. It's new and else will want her. How do we get that loser to date this amazing girl? I know, we can pay him. Because this plan has to be very complicated, they actually get this loser involved. The dude who she used to sleep with treated her terribly. Somehow this jock dude gets involved. Jock can so. And this guy's like, okay, I'm gonna pay you so that I can be popular so that you can sleep with the sister and then my friend can sleep with the, the shrew. Like, ugh. So then Jock Kensel goes up to Difficult Kensel, explains the situation that he can't coerce the sister unless he coerces the shrew. <laughs> and he's on board with this. This is her love interest, y'all. I want you to understand how awful this dude is. And yet at the end, we're rooting for them as a couple. What? Just like... Ryan Reynolds' character in The Proposal, this dude hates the main character, the shrew. And the whole movie is us trying to believe this love story, that he somehow went from hating her to loving her. But he also had to get paid to date her. And 20 bucks wasn't enough. He knows his worth. $50 to deal with this bitch. Now, the way he courts her is not romantic. I'll take you to places you've never been before. While she's playing soccer. Like, she's out minding her business all the time, and he just comes into her world. He's like, hey, 
follows her when she's shopping. She's like, uh, are you following me? <sighs> this is how you win the girl. And he's like, you're not afraid of me, are you? And I love this. Why would I be afraid of you? By the way, this movie is a combination of my least favorite movie of all time, Beauty and the Beast, that this, but, and Taming of the Shrew. So this shrew, this amazing woman needs to be tamed. And at the same time, she is going to be the only one willing to date a beast that everyone's terrified of. A beast that throws tables at our little bell. A terrifying, terrifying man. She's going to tame him. But somehow this is taming her. Like, oh God, it's the worst of two different... Mm. He's like, most people are afraid of me. I love it. She's like, well, I'm not. <laughs> and this is his response. But I'm sure you've thought about me naked. This guy is the worst. He is not flattering. He's not romantic. He's just a douche. Just like her father who blames everything on PMS and her just being a woman. Difficult. And she calls her father out all the time. She's like, you don't trust me to make my own choices. You're getting revenge on me because mom left you. Like, I love this character. And I think that's why a lot of women love this movie. They love this character. Just like in the proposal, they make it so that everyone hates her because she's just too much. Everyone treats her like crap. And her character arc is to soften and be tame. But they do this by humiliating her and having her date a man way beneath her who also hates her. So Jock Kensel and this Kensel meet up again to exchange more money. He knows that he has power over this guy. He's going to exploit him for more money. $100 per date up front. And in order to win her over, the nice Kensel gets the sister to take her and <laughs> take him into her bedroom. She shows him her sister's black underwear, which means that she wants schmegs. That's what she says. Gives her background story. So then these guys inform him of what he needs to do to coerce the shrew. He's like, oh God. Not only is he getting a hundred bucks, now he's got to buy her some noodles and a book and sit around and listen to chicks who can't play their instruments right. So they're setting this a feminist up with this man who hates women's music. And they just like hates everything about this woman. Hence the name, I guess. Sorry, girl, not woman. So then Dangerous Incel goes to an all woman's show, sees her just living her life, dancing. She decides, I'm going to destroy that. Like when she sees him, she's so annoyed because this guy is stalking her. But that's so romantic. I mean, look, I never seen you so sexy. This guy is, uh, he never asks her to do anything he commands. Come to Bogey's party with me. She's like, you never give up, do you? Like, the dude doesn't take no. Little does she know it's because he's getting paid a hundred bucks. She eventually decides to go to the party. There's another problematic scene. This super drunk girl, he's like, he's like, here, go over to this guy. So this guy gets to make out with a super drunk girl. He can't probably consent very well. And he's like, thanks, man. This is giving 16 candles. <sighs> At some point, they have our shrew dancing on a table. <sighs> And we're supposed to love this Kensel because he doesn't grape her. He even makes fun of her vocabulary and she's drunk and can't comprehend. Oh, you use, even use big words when you smack. What a good guy for not taking advantage of her. Taming the shrew. Oh, look, she actually kind of likes him. Look at your green eyes. What a good guy. In the car ride home. Like, I know everyone digs your sister, but she's not all that. Oh, talking crap about my sister. Now I want to kiss you. I'm not like other girls. Cool girl. But he rejects her. What a good guy. <sighs> Then he stalks her some more. Music shop, at a bookstore. Tries to get her back by telling her she's not as mean as she thinks she is. What? She's like, fork off. So then he pays this dude. Give him a microphone. So he can do this while she's playing soccer. How romantic. <sighs> but it worked. So then she flashes her teacher to help him get out of detention in front of all her peers. So they can do this and go paintballing where they make out. Like, what? And then when they go back to her house, he's falling for this dude. He's like, no, tell me something about you that no one knows. Uh, you're sweet and sexy and hot for me. And instead of asking yet again, he tells her, go to prom with me because he's getting paid. Is that a request or a command? Good, good response. When she says no, because he should ask, not tell. He says, I don't want to. He's like, well, you know, you really need therapy. She's suspicious that why he's being so pushy about this. And he's like, no, there's nothing in for me. You need to go to therapy. Gaslighting her intuition. Seriously, she knows something's up. Asks him several times and he's like, no, no, I didn't know what you're talking about. She has some stupid talk with her sister. And then they put her sister in a tire swing with baby doll shoes on. What? The shrews changed your mind now. And apologize. So sorry I questioned your motive. I was wrong. You're forgiven. Well, she finds out the truth and is pissed. She's like, I didn't care about the mini. Liar. He never apologizes. She humiliates herself in class with this dumb poem, being like, you're always right. I hate it when you make me cry. I hate it when you lie. But I hate that I don't hate you. Basically, take me back. He gets her guitar, says no other girl would flash the teacher to get me out of detention. She's humiliated. But this is love, y'all.